episode of Bravo Charlie's. Today we're going to be doing beef jerky. I do not own a dehydrator, so I'm going to show you a method on how to do it in our oven without a dehydrator. Without a dehydrator. Um, I read this in Men's Health magazine. Uh, this recipe I'm going to do and this technique I read in that magazine. I'm going to try and find a link for the article, and I'll put the link for the article in the description below. But I'll also put all of these ingredients in the description below as well, so you could just expand that. Um, and see the ingredients if you need to refer to those at a later time. But this is a very simple method. It's going to require a 24 hour marinade and then about a four hour to five hour trip into a 200 degree oven. And there is a technique involved that we'll discuss later into getting the meat to dehydrate in your oven. So the first half of this video will go over the marinade, second half will go over how to make the oven and turn the oven into your dehydrator. We're coming up on hunting season, so you could use deer, you could use any other type of um, uh, wild game that you want, but I have beef, and what I did is I have two pounds of a, it's a top sirloin steak, or sometimes you'll see it listed as London broil. So a two pound top sirloin London broil steak is what I have. And what you wanna do is get a butcher to take that steak for you, cut all the excess fat off of it, all the silver skin, all the excess fat that might be on that London broil on that two pound top sirloin steak, cut it all off. And then I had him cut it lengthwise in strips that are about a quarter of an inch thick. Now, by all means, you could do this at home, but if a butcher will do it for you, they have the equipment to do it and make it real simple for you. So I have it all cut into quarter inch strips that is going to dehydrate and be beef jerky. Now, something I noticed when I was buying this, beef jerky, for about six to seven ounces cost seven dollars. Most of them, unless you're buying a cheap brand. This meat was six dollars and 49 cents a pound. So even with the extra ingredients that I have here, I mean salt, uh, lemon, Worcestershire sauce, these ingredients don't add a lot of cost to it. So doing this yourself is going to save you at least half off the cost of buying it in a bag. And once you make this, if you put it in an airtight container, it'll stay up to three months in your refrigerator. So what we're gonna do is just do the marinade and you can either do the marinade in a large plastic bag, or in this case, I have a nice flat Tupperware container. I'm just gonna put the meat in here, pour everything on top, and I'll go over the, the size of the ingredients as I pour them in. But this way, once the lid's on, I can shake it up a few times throughout the day um, and let this sit for 24 hours and then do the second half of the video tomorrow. So let's go ahead and just get the meat in here first. Okay, I got the coffee. This is coffee brown sugar beef jerky. So what we're going to do is we have the meat in the container. I brewed a cup and a half of coffee. Now you're supposed to use dark coffee. I don't have any. I just have regular um, regular caffeinated coffee. I didn't have any dark coffee. I've never made this before, so this is an experiment for me and for you um, to see how this turns out. So I just use regular coffee, but if you have a dark blended coffee, a real heavy black coffee, that's what I would put in. But I have a cup and a half of just regular coffee. We are going to put in a packed quarter cup of brown sugar, a half of cup of red, a half cup of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice squeezed. This was about one and a half lemons. A quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. And two cloves of garlic. Now, if you can see, the garlic, I already ran it through the garlic press. You can either smash it and put it in here because you're not going to eat it, it's just for the marinade. But if you run it through a garlic press, it really releases all of the um, oils and the flavor in the garlic. So two cloves of garlic. Now we are going to use also, in any marinade you always have to have salt. The salt helps break down. Oh, and one other thing I got to mention. Don't pour hot coffee in here. As you noticed, I got the coffee out of the refrigerator. It's been sitting in there for an hour. 
If you pour hot coffee in here, you're gonna start cooking the meat. You don't wanna cook the meat now. So cool the coffee to room temperature at least, that's when you pour it in. But you always need salt in with a marinade to help break down the meat fibers and get everything going in this uh, mixture. So I'm gonna put one tablespoon of kosher salt. We are going to use two teaspoons of ground allspice. Not all of you may have this um, spice readily available at home, but it is easy to find in your grocery store. Um, so it was two teaspoons of that. I am only going to use one teaspoon of the crushed red pepper flakes. By all means, if you like it spicier, you can use two teaspoons. And this is optional, but from cooking with this and other recipes, I know it makes a heck of a difference, is liquid smoke. You can find this in the spice aisle of just about any grocery store in the country. So you're going to use two teaspoons of liquid smoke. And it, it's amazing, it smells just like a barbecue grill with a rack of ribs on there. And it really does add a unique flavor to something like this. So I'm gonna put two, te two teaspoons, two tablespoons, two teaspoons of liquid smoke in. And like I said, I will go over these ingredients, I'll list them all in the description below for uh, you to reference later on. So, get all the meat covered. There's not a whole lot of need to stir this real good because it will all dissolve on its own over the next 24 hours. But once you put the lid on it, and this is a very tight Tupper, or this is Rubbermaid, very tight Rubbermaid container, give it a couple shakes. And I don't know if you could hear the barking in the background, but that's my new puppy, a two month old blonde lab. My daughter has her up in the bedroom and they're playing. Do you hear that? If you, um, I'll have links below for my Pinterest page and I started a Pinterest page with pictures of Ella and a couple times a week I put a new picture of Ella up there. So I'm going to give that a shake, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and I'll be back in 24 hours to finish this video and we'll put it in the oven and I'll show you the technique to get this all dehydrated and we're going to try this for the first time together and see how it turns out. Well here we are 24 hours later and the beef jerky has been marinating and what we're going to do here is just take a cooling rack like this, put it on a cookie tray with edges. So as these dry out, a lot of the fluid is going to leak down and be captured in this. So we're going to line this. There's no need to put any non-stick spray or anything like that on here. We're just going to line this cool or line the cooling rack with the beef strips. Now I have the oven behind me preheating to 200 degrees. In fact, it's already there. So it's preheated and ready to go. I'm going to let these in three to five hours. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Like I said, this is the first time I've done it. So three to five hours. I'm going to check it at three hours. I'm going to check it at four hours. And I will come back when it's done and show you the finished product, how they turned out, and exactly how much time it took. But I'm just going to keep lining this. Okay, and in the oven we go. Now, one other tip. We need to leave the oven door cracked so the moisture can escape and the beef can dry out. So if you have a simple wooden spoon, 
Just take the handle and prop open the door ever so slightly so moisture can seep out and the oven will still run at 200 degrees. The burner is going to stay on pretty much the entire time because heat will be coming out. The moisture will be coming out. At the same time, the uh, beef strips should dry out and turn into a good beef jerky. Well, two car washes and vacuuming out two vehicles and cleaning the garage a little bit, I'm back. This took four hours. So this is a good uh, weekend project, Saturday or Sunday afternoon project while you have other things to do. Uh, I checked it at three hours and the consistency of the jerky was still too soft. Now you can see it, it breaks easily, just like that, just like jerky should. And even the thicker piece still comes right apart. So I did try one and it does taste really good. Very tasty. It actually tastes a lot like this, the uh, Jack Links that you might get. I typically always bought the Jack Links original. This tastes very similar to that at half the cost. Remember this only cost me the steak that I used for this only cost $6.50 a pound and one, what is it, six or eight ounce bag of Jack Links costs six or seven dollars in the grocery store. So this is less than half the cost. You know what the ingredients are. You control everything. This is a great project to do. It's, um, it's very tasty. You'll enjoy it. They still have the other rack in the oven. It's done, the oven's open. So all you're gonna do at this point is you wanna take a paper towel and you need to, just like you would with bacon, blot off any of the remaining grease. You need to get all that off, off, off of the, uh, the jerky. Then put this in a Ziploc baggie or some type of airtight container and it will stay good in your refrigerator for up to three months. So give this a try. Let me know what you think of it. No dehydrator needed. Everything was done in my oven at 200 degrees. It took four hours. I was saying I checked it at three hours, checked it again at three and a half hours, and at three and a half hours, I put it in for an additional 25 minutes. So I just round up and say it was in for four hours. Turned out perfect. If you try this, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe button to see more videos. They'll be coming out once a week, every Sunday. And thanks again for joining us at Bravo Charlie's.